Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. As you may notice, I'm not wearing my usual jeans and t-shirt or jacket or something like that right now. I'm wearing some of the medieval clothes that I wear when we do medieval reenactment. And this weekend I was fortunate enough to take a whole stack of classes online because we've really been missing playing with our people who like doing medieval reenactment. And even though it was online, I still got my good clothes on and I <laughs> got all ready. Now, I admit I was wearing slippers instead of period shoes, but my slippers are not that different than period shoes. So <laughs> I'm gonna just let, kinda let that one slide. But I decided it was time to go ahead and make another apron. Now, if you've been following this for any length of time, you watched me put on this apron back in, who I don't know, October, November, when I was making, or maybe even December, when I was making uh, Pompeian Tart, which is a type of pumpkin pie that was appropriate to the late 1500s. When I went to make this apron, I spent a huge amount of time doing research because one of the problems we have a lot of times is we see things being used, so we assume they're correct. Well, the reality is a lot of times just because something is being used doesn't mean it was historically correct. And I really try and make an effort to be as correct as possible. Now, yeah, I'm wearing my Victoria's Secrets underneath of this, not giving that part up, but for this outfit, it doesn't make any difference. I don't need any kind of stays or other stuff. But I thought, you know, I'm gonna make another apron. Why not show people how I did it? This is the super easiest apron on the face of the planet to make, but just not having a clue to where to start really stalled me out last year when I went to make mine. It's super easy, but when you don't know where to start, sometimes you just kind of stall and you're not sure what to do. So I will include some pictures of some period aprons in this video. We'll pop them in later. And there's lots of different types to choose from. Both men and women wear the same sort of aprons most of the time, unless you're talking about really high-end status aprons. Most of them are simply practical. You have to realize I can change my t-shirt and jeans every day if I want to and throw them in the laundry and all that kind of good stuff. You know what? They didn't have that. Most people were lucky if they had a couple of outfits, especially working class people. So trying to keep their clothes clean was a really important thing. I remember when my Mom used to cook and stuff and do housework. She always wore an apron. It's a couple different kinds, but this is super easy. Way simpler than anything my mom ever wore. So let's get started. First thing, I chose some linen. Now, you don't have to do linen, you can do cotton. Why would I do linen? Because linen would have been what they would have used, or wool or leather, depending on what you're doing. If you're a blacksmith, you would have worn leather. If you were a cook, you would have worn either linen or wool. Why? Well, if I were to use something like a polyester and I were actually cooking and I were to get close to the fire, I would either burst into flames or at least melt my apron. That's not a very effective thing. Now, obviously they didn't have polyester back then, but you want a self-extinguishing fabric. That means something that if you take a little snippet of fabric and you light it, it will just kind of naturally pull it, put itself out when you pull that flame away. And one of the problems with a lot of the wools we get today is even though they're often sold as wool, a lot of times they're a mix. And if it smells like you've burned a plastic carton, it's not wool. So I happen to own wool. I also happen to own linen and this linen was particularly a color I was fond of because it reminded me of the kind of color you would get if you dyed it with natural indigo. So I thought that was perfect. Now, most of the aprons that we see that are pre-1600s are not dyed. They are often plain white. Why? Well, it costs money to dye things. I'm going to be luxurious and make believe I could afford to use either scraps of old clothing or something to make my linen aprons. I actually wear these when I am working in my shop at events 
and I much prefer to wear a period apron rather than something that's, that, that advertises one of the jewelry suppliers I use or something like that. Is it a sin to wear something that's not period? Well, it depends on your opinion. <laughs> I prefer to wear something, period. I figure if I'm trying to go for the whole look, I, you know, I'm going to ignore the fact that I need glasses. Can I do without glasses? Yeah, but I'm not going to read the fine print because I'm farsighted. So it's not a good idea if I'm running a shop. I'm trying to do as good a job as I can. How do we do this? Okay, it just so happens that the linen I have has a very nice edge to it. This is the selvage edge. It is the edge of the fabric as it is worn, as it is actually woven on the machine. And this edge also has a nice selvage edge. So I decided that I was going to cheat because sometimes you cheat to win. <laughs> so on my top of my apron, I actually just use the selvage edge as an edge and I roll it down and I make what they call a casing, which is just simply a tube like you find on the top of a lot of sweatpants and pajamas for a string to go through. Now, the th strings that I'm using on my apron happen to be linen tape. And where can you get linen tape? Uh, you can get it at 96 District Fabrics online. You can sometimes get it at Joanne Fabrics. Does it have to be linen tape? No, I was just trying to be picky and I own linen tape, so. You could use a string, you could use a soft rope, just something that will tie. Could you make a string or a something instead? Yeah, you could literally take a piece of fabric and roll it a couple of times and sew it and, you know, cut it, strip and sew it and create your own string. I didn't want to do that. I own linen tape. It works fine. So how do I decide on the size? Well, I recommend, since we are not all the same size, that you do your size based on the size of your apron, based on the size of you. And what I did was I measured. I said, OK, this is just going to be gathered together up here. This is nothing fancy. This is you know, your basic drawstring waistband sort of approach to life. I wanted something that would go around to my sides because I'm trying to cover the front of me. I'm standing in my crafty area right now, so the place is pretty trashy, but that's okay. So I take my fabric and I literally measure hip bone to hip bone, just like that. I want to, you know, it's, the, it's where my side seam would be on my clothes. I'm measuring across my stomach. Stomachs vary in size. Body shapes vary tremendously, but that way you're actually covering the front of you. That's what you want to do, because if you're sewing, you're not likely to get real mess on yourself. If you're cooking or doing something else, you could be splashing all over the front of yourself. So your goal is to cover that part of you. So all I did was I created a rectangle. I have the selvage at the top, a long side cut, the selvage at the bottom, it's just a rectangle. I was not too concerned about how long this was. I will actually chop it off some. I just literally took a chunk off the fabric. I wanted it to go from, see if I roll this down as if I was making a top. I'm rolling down about an inch and a half to two inches. And I wanted my apron to come down about to my knees so I'll just chomp off that bottom so all I'm doing is creating you can see this is raw I haven't started to see, sew that yet I've created a rectangle of fabric I'm going to seam this up on the sides roll this down on the top seam it up on the bottom seam that up on the thing and I've got an apron now I know not everybody sews I've been sewing since I was a little bitty kid because I wanted doll clothes. I didn't really care about the dolls, I just liked the clothes, so <laughs> what can you say? But let me show you what I'm gonna basically do here. I'll come in a little closer. 
we'll talk about the process. I'm gonna make believe this is the top. It doesn't matter which salvage you use as the top. All I would do is probably look and see which one is nicer. Sometimes you'll get rough spots on a salvage that just look a little ratty, or sometimes if you bought the fabric as a, as a uh, scrap from the uh, store, it won't be as nice. Now this selvage is actually not as nice looking as this one, so I'll chop that one off. So here I have what's going to be the top of my apron. Now I've already seen this over here. I've rolled it. Now how do I roll something like this? Well I actually, if there's any fuzzy spots like this, I'll trim that off first. And then I'm going to do a little quarter inch edge and I'm going to run my thumbnail on it and you see it's folded over nicely. Now after I've got that done I'm going to do it again. And now I have a finished edge. You could sew this with a sewing machine. I actually enjoy doing handwork. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to pin it and I'm going to sew it by hand. This is not a period pin cushion or a period scissor or, or period thread, but that's okay. These are also not period pins. <laughs> These are from Joanne Fabrics. So, and I get nothing from Joanne's. So, here we go. I'm going to simply pin like that. And I'm going to continue this down. Now, I will not pin the entire edge before I start sewing. That's just not the way I like to do things. Could I pin it the other way? Well, yeah, I could. Here's the problem. If I try to pin this, this is such a narrow little seam. If I try and pin this, it is possible, but it's really kind of awkward <laughs> to have the pin going this way. So I find that for things like this, a lot of times having the pin in line with where I'm actually going to be sewing makes it easier. Now I've got two pins in place. I need a needle and I need thread. This is not a period needle. I actually make and sell period needles in my shop. But to be honest, for finer linen work, I don't usually use them. We are lucky enough to own steel needles which would have been a very high-end item in the 1500s <laughs> and uh, very rarely owned by your average soul, shall we say. Now I'm not going to double the thread. I'm going to leave it single. Yeah. Twink. I'm just making a little knot at the end. I'm going to trim off the extra string at the end and my goal is not really to teach how to sew. I figure most people can learn that. There are plenty of videos online. I'm just going to show you how I would do my apron. So here we go. We have the selvage. I'm going to put the knot inside the selvage finished seam that's going to be there. And I'm going to make a few stitches just to hold the edge of the, what will be in a completely enclosed seam in place. Now, why is this important? Well, if you leave it open, it's going to tend to catch on things. And even though I am hand sewing this, and I'm only hand sewing it with a single piece of thread, not double or triple or anything like that. I still want this to hold up and 
I have outfits that were sewn this way 20 years ago that are still fine. The dress I'm wearing, actually, the cuffs are done on it exactly the same way, and this dress was made, oh dear, uh, in about 1999, maybe as late as 2000. So if you take care of your clothes and you use good fabric to start with, they'll still be there <laughs> a long time later. Now, granted, I don't wear this every day, but there are events where I do wear something similar to this every day for two weeks at a time. So this dress has had plenty of washings. Now, I've got this end here closed up, and i am started sewing in that direction. All I'm going to do is grab one or two threads on the main body, and I would normally do this in one step, but for learners, grab one or two threads right next to where that edge is, pull the thread through, then grab the edge of the fold with a needle, oops, there we go, and repeat. Now once you're good at this, you can do that in one step. And it's pretty amazing how fast you can learn to sew by hand. Why do I like this particular technique? First of all, it creates an incredibly sturdy, fully enclosed seam. Linen has a natural tendency to fray. And I don't want my fabric fraying. I also want it to look nice. Would your average handmaiden or farm hand have had something this nice in period? Probably not. The actual period hand sewing that we see is often quite coarse and clunky by modern standards. That does not mean that I have to make mine quite coarse and clunky. It means that I have the documentation to show that it is okay to be coarse and clunky, but I may not choose to do that. I may choose to bow to modern aesthetics and make them more tidy. I have to admit that when I see someone hand sew an outfit and the sewing is sloppy, although I have seen extant pieces with sloppy sewing on them, that doesn't mean that I appreciate that. Now, I've obviously sewn about an inch and a quarter right there right now. When you flip it, there are no there's no thread showing. Even if I were to use a contrasting thread on this, there would be very little, if any, thread showing because I'm only grabbing a little teeny bit of thread. If you're concerned about it ripping out, which it doesn't usually, one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they place these stitches too far apart. If I was to do a stitch here, and then I were to make a really long stitch, and come out to maybe here. Now there's this whole section here that could get hooked on things, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to place my stitches about every quarter of an inch or less, and that's going to give me a very tight, sturdy seam. Now, that's how I would do my side seams. And I already have one side seam done on this, Everybody has seen the tops of sweatpants and drawstring pants and things like that. That's all we're going to create at the top of this apron to draw it in so that it stays together. Here's that selvage we were talking about before. Remember, I'm going to sew down this side, I'm going to sew down this side. Can you do this with a sewing machine? Yes, you can, 100%. Some people do not like hand sewing or if you're in a giant rush. You're not going to want to hand sew something. So here's the selvage. Remember, the selvage is the side of the fabric that is actually woven stiffly with extra reinforcement so that the process of weaving does not destroy the fabric. I'm going to simply fold this over like that. I'm going to fold, let's see, how far did I fold it on here? I folded it about an inch and a half. 
So, it, and this, it doesn't matter. What matters is how big is the th string that you're going to use. So if you're going to use a big honking string, which I don't recommend because you're going to find it uncomfortable around your neck, but if you're going to use something larger, then you're going to need to make a bigger casement. I do recommend that if you're not good at eyeballing things and getting your seam straight, that you simply measure. Use some chalk, measure the fabric, and there. Now, I'm going to sew this and I might take off the top of my own apron that I'm wearing. Oops, <laughs> complete with microphone. Let's put the microphone back. There we go. <laughs> See, all I have done here is I have sewed right here along the edge of that selvage to this fabric the same there's the selvage I've, I've done a simple whip stitch the same way I did on the sides and then once this is done I was able to thread my tape through there now, how long a piece of tape do I need? It's totally up to how long you want it to be. I like this edge of the apron, the upper edge, to come up fairly close to my neckline because I know from my own habits that if I'm going to splash, it's probably going to be somewhere on the, on the bosom or slightly below it, and therefore I want the entire bosom covered. So I'm going to want this to be up here somewhere. Once I have my apron tied, I tend to just leave it tied and slide it on over my head. My mom used to do the same thing. I do the same thing with my modern aprons that I have out in the studio that I use when I'm doing metalworking. When I'm in my shop, I often, often am doing metalworking. So this is designed for that as much as anything else. But we see them used a lot of times for cooks and people who are cooking in kitchens and doing other sloppy, messy things. So what else do we need? We've got the side seams, we've got the top casement, here we go, and we need that string at the waist. <laughs> now, you won't have a Zoom microphone on yours, so let me cover that up. <laughs> but all I did was sew on a string that's all. I took the end of the tape, I rolled it over, and I sewed this to the back. You can see it a little bit on the front. It's an apron. It's not supposed to be a piece of artwork. There are aprons that are pieces of artwork. Some of the late 1500s German aprons that are totally smocked and embroidered are pieces of artwork. This is a utilitarian functional apron. So because I didn't want it to fray, I also rolled the end of the tape and sewed that down. Super simple. It's a big rectangle. Then you tie it around yourself. Is it the most flattering thing on the planet? Oh, heck no. But that's not the point. The point is to keep the front of your clothes clean. And I know several people who have worn these over the years when they were doing heavy duty kitchen work for feasts. And it works great. Works great. I've used it for cooking before. I use it mostly in my shop when I'm working and it's perfectly fine. So don't hesitate. Don't let it freeze you in place not knowing what to do. Simply measure side seam to side seam across the front. Consider which is the biggest part of you. If you have a large tummy, you need to measure the roundest part of your tummy if you have a large bosom, you may need to give a bit extra so that you can completely cover because the point is to cover all of this so that when you're cooking or doing anything else messy, you can keep your clothes clean. So I hope this helps. I am looking forward to making the rest of this apron and I have several other aprons in mind. I have a, another outfit that I wear sometimes when it's a little cooler 
that is made from wool. And that apron is a simple piece of linen that is pinned across the front of the stomach, which is a totally period way of doing it. But I think that's another video. So I hope you find this interesting. I hope you find it helpful. I must have spent, the first time I went to do this, I must have spent, I don't know, two, three, four, five days doing some pretty serious research trying to find documentation for aprons. And I knew what kind I wanted because I'd seen them before and I knew that the people who had made them probably would have actually gotten documentation. But I couldn't find it. And actually yesterday when I was looking, I couldn't find it either. I have documentation for all kinds of aprons except for this one. But I will put it up <laughs> because I know it's there because I did find it. So be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. I love sewing. I love doing handwork in the evening when I'm watching a video or a Netflix or whatever, YouTube. <laughs> and I don't sit still well. So having something to do, whether I'm knitting or whether I'm sewing aprons, and aprons are so easy, but it's one of those things that gives you just that right look while keeping your clothes clean. It's a win-win. So until next time, bye.